Hello everyone, this is Thomas here with Groove3 and welcome to our tutorial series on the Europa synthesizer inside of Reason 10. This course will provide you with an in-depth overview of the different parts of this new synthesizer, as well as covering how to create different types of synthesizer patches. So what I want to do with this video is first just kind of cover the basics before we dive in a little bit deeper and show off each individual part of the synthesizer. So first, at its core, Europa is a wavetable synthesizer that uses both spectral filters that are a type of additive filter and regular subtractive filters as well. So we can just go ahead and pull in an instance of the Europa synthesizer. And if we look at the interface, we see some familiar controls like filters and envelopes, um, but then also some more advanced things like wavetable synthesis. So first, before we dive into each of those, I wanna show you how to load presets. It's a really great way to kind of get a feel for the synthesizer and also what kind of patches and different sounds you can create with this new device. So to load up presets, it's quite easy. All you do is go to the little load icon, select it, and it'll give you this giant folder here. And right now in the default patch, it's one of the lead patches. But if we go to this menu drop down and go to Europa Shape Shifting Synthesizer, we'll see all of the different patches that we have available. We have bass patches, effects, melodies, Pads percussion, plucks, poly sounds for playing chords, rhythmic, and even some synthesizer textures. So let's say, for example, we want to load in one of the pluck sounds. Let's just do this bottle pluck sound. All you have to do is either drag and drop it onto the synthesizer, and it'll load up for you. Or you can select this little load icon, and that'll load up the patch for you as well. So as I said earlier, it's a great way to kind of start off messing around with the sounds to get a feel for what the synth is capable of doing. So for now, we can go ahead and reset our device so we have our initialized patch. So what we have here is a wavetable synthesizer. The waveforms aren't going to be generated as audio, and instead they're kind of treated as a sort of algorithm that we work with. So with these algorithms, it's really a string of different waveforms all stuck together that you can scan through. So if we start with this little shape control, you'll see what I'm talking about here. All the way on the left, we have a sine wave whenever it's selected to this basic analog waveform. And as I increase this knob, you'll see that that waveform is shifting. Changes to a triangle waveform. As we bring it up, changes to a square waveform. And then when we put it all the way up, we have a saw waveform. So the wavetable is basically like just a collection of waves that are all strung together. And then you can blend and go anywhere in between those waveforms. This style of synthesis can be really useful in two ways. The first of which is if you're doing advanced modulations, creating really complex and evolving bass sounds or complex pads or leads or anything like that. Um, and by modulating the waveform, this shape control, while the sound is playing back, you can create a variety of really interesting and complicated synth sounds. The second way that this is really helpful is if you want to make hybrid style waveforms that are sort of in between, let's say, for example, a sine wave and a triangle wave. So let's say, for example, we're making a sub bass sound and we have a traditional sine wave. So back all the way to the left here, that's just the initialized patch. And that sounds like this. So it's a nice sounding sine wave, but let's say we want a little bit more grit and a little bit more texture, kind of like you have with the triangle wave. But we don't want to lose all of the bass sounds that we have. With wavetable synthesis, we can go somewhere in between a sine wave and a triangle wave let's say 14.1%, that gives us more of a textured sine wave, triangle wave hybrid sound. It'll sound like this. Whereas our traditional sine wave sounds like this. So with the wavetable, it gives us the ability to create a really nice hybrid sound. So we don't have to choose between the two waveforms, we can make our own custom waveform that's a mixture of the two. And these wavetables aren't just basic waveforms. We have some things that are more complex. For example, we just select one of these random wavetables here, um, like Morpher, for example. You'll see it starts off on this kind of square waveform. And as you move it, it gets progressively more crazy whenever you start to increase the shape. And that sounds like this. So the wavetables can get quite complicated and you get some really interesting sounds out of it. So the last thing that I wanted to do was just give you a basic overview of the different parts of the synthesizer. So it starts off with the different engine selectors. We have three engines to choose from. You can think about it being like advanced oscillators. So we have waveforms, waveform modifiers that affect that audio algorithm that is the wavetable. 
We have spectral filters, which is a style of additive filtering. And then we have a unison mode, and that'll be unique to each of those different engines. We have a audio mixer section, some filter controls, an amplifier envelope, four different advanced modulation envelopes, three different LFOs, a modulation bus to route everything into one another, and then a bunch of different effects units that we can use to sculpt our sound. If you ever want to take a look at the signal flow of the synthesizer, you can hit tab on Reasons Rack, and I'll just flip everything around for you. And you'll see in this block diagram, we have our waveforms going into our spectral filter, going into the unison unit, and the mixer, filter, amplifier envelope, and then through our multi effects. You can also see how these modifiers are affecting our waveforms, as well as how the harmonics engine is affecting the spectral filter. So that covers everything in the first video. Make sure to join us in the next video where we'll be diving into the synthesizer and talking about the oscillator section and how to use it. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next video.